headquarters of Ramsey Solutions. This is the Ramsey Show. It's where we help you win in life, specifically with your money, in your work, and in your relationships. The phone number to jump in is 888-825-5225, 888 888- 825-5225. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by the incomparable, the illustrious, wow. the esteemed, number one best-selling author of Breaking Free from Broke. I had to look over my shoulder. I got so into the compliments. You know how to make a guy feel good. I do. He is my good friend as well. We were just talking about having a uh, fabulous dinner uh, together with some other friends the other night. And uh, George and I have a lot of fun together. He is George Camel, of course, and uh, he's going to be your money expert today. I'll weigh in. And then let's talk about your income. Let's talk about making money. This is a show about making money, too, and I'm the work expert, they tell me. And uh, Dave has said for decades, your your income is your greatest wealth building tool. So uh, you got any work questions that get you on the path to making more money? I'm your guy today. George will weigh in on those as well. You ready to go, partner? I'm so ready. All right. Vanessa is going to start us off in Dallas, Texas. Vanessa, how can we help? Yes. My question is, uh, what should I invest my $100 a month in to be a millionaire by 65? Oh, great How old question. are you? Well, I am 27. I'll be 28 in September this year. So that was my other question. Should I backtrack? Because the post that Dave Ramsey had said was at 25. I mean, I know I'm just a little bit behind on that. Yeah, not far behind at all. What do you got for it, George? You love your investment oh, calculator. I've got my calculator you just out. just cracked like, your knuckles. <laughs> I'm pushing my glasses up. I'm ready to go, Vanessa. Tell her, George. Okay, so let's talk about your financial picture. Where You're saying $100 a month because that was the example Dave used. At yeah, 25, yeah. starting at, tw- at 25. Starting at 25 if you invest mm-hmm. 100 bucks a month. And so that post exists to tell people it's very much possible to become a millionaire, and it's simpler and easier than you think. It's just consistency plus time. It doesn't take a huge six-figure income. And so that's the point of the post. I just want to make that clear. We're not telling people you should invest only $100 a month. So mm-hmm. where what's your financial status right now? Are you debt-free? Do you have an emergency fund? Um, so we are debt free. My husband and I, we are debt free. Um, we also have savings, but we don't, we are both self-employed and so we don't have a retirement. And so that's kind of why I was like, well, you know, even if we did more than a hundred dollars a month, but the minimum a hundred dollars a month, we would have something in place if, uh, we both weren't able to work at 65. Yeah. You know? What's your uh, household we've income? We've never really thought about a retirement. Um, it's about 50. Total household yeah, income? Yeah, we don't make a whole... Mm-hmm. I'm primarily a stay-at-home wife, and I bake cakes on the side, so my husband primarily brings in um, the money. Um, but we don't need a lot because our home is paid for and our vehicles are as well. Great. Wow. Um, what does he do? He kind of, yeah, he um, builds metal buildings and shops and barns like that. And he does work. it for himself? Him and a buddy. They do it together. Yes, sir. How long have they been doing it? Um, he's been doing it about a year and a half, two years now. Is he, do you ever hear him? Do you guys talk about what he thinks the possibilities are going forward? You know, year two, year three, year four, the fact that it's just two of them building metal buildings. Yeah. Um, not really financially, like how far they can go with it because he kind of just does it for, for fun and to bring money in as well. But we really don't have like, we don't live a luxurious life to where we need a whole lot of money. Sure. Um, I mean, you know, so I just, I'm just worried about like a retirement thing. Yeah, um, no, don't be worried. He does have a, like a medical condition. So his thing is, is like last month he was out two weeks of work. Oh. Um, you know, so he does have to take off sometimes for procedures oh. or things that come up. So that was my other idea. You know, like what if he doesn't, if he's not able to work um, at a certain age or something happens to me, you know, do you have kids? What should we be investing our money in? We have a five-year-old and we might have another one. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Um, well, I, George, George could speak to and he, he kind of already has, but I, w- I would, the reason I'm asking that question is because, and now it's even more important knowing he's got this medical condition. And I love that you're able to be at home right now and bake cakes. In fact, if you want to send a cake to George and I, we'd be okay with that. Um, but, <laughs> I'd love to. <laughs> yeah, it'd be fantastic. George, George is gluten-free. Do you make gluten-free cakes? 
I absolutely do. Yes. Fantastic. Okay, now George can part <laughs> business. I am all for the gluten. Can we add extra gluten? I am pro gluten. <laughs> uh, but uh, the reason I'm, I'm bringing this up is because Vanessa, if you feel like we want to catch up or we want to put more than two hundred dollars a month meaning 100 from him 100 from you you do know that you've got the option to go work and you'd have to change your lifestyle some but it seems like you guys have really a uh, really frugal lifestyle which gives you options and so right. i just don't want you to have this fear hanging over your head uh, because you guys can catch up and catch up quickly right george yes and so the first place i would go for you is a roth ira and that's going to use okay. after-tax money. It's not connected to an employer. Anybody with earned income can contribute to that. And the maximum for 2024 is $7,000. And you can open one as well. So your husband can open one. You can open one. So that's 7000 each. Now, when it comes to the amount you should invest, we recommend 15% when you're in baby step four. Now, because you guys have a paid for house that puts you in baby step seven, which means you can invest even more than 15%. So I would not recommend investing 100 bucks in your shoes. You should be investing at least 7,500 bucks a year. Okay. And so when you open that Roth IRA and one of a, a Smartvestor Pro can help you with this, you can reach out to one at RamseySolutions.com and get connected. These are financial okay. advisors, investing pros who can help set these up, help you understand what you're actually doing. And this is an individual retirement arrangement. And all it is, it's a shell. Within that, you then invest and buy mutual funds, which is just a basket of stocks, 90 to 200 companies that we're all rooting for to win and you know grow. And so that will help you create a you know 10 to 12 percent return is what we've been seeing in the market and so i just did the calculation for you from 27 to 67 if you just put 100 bucks in there you could end up with 860 grand at 11 percent return okay. how does that make you feel vanessa good yeah oh, very so you good. take 7500 yeah. for example and the numbers change drastically when you start to get into those oh, numbers. this is what i get excited so 7500 bucks that's 625 a month right Mm -hmm. If you invest six twenty five dollars a month from 27 to 67 that would grow it to $5.3 million. Wow. With an 11% return. If you scale it down to 10%, 3.9. Vanessa. Let's go more conservative. That's still 2.9. Vanessa. So wow. the key Are you is worried anymore? get started, do this every year, no. and don't <laughs> touch it. She's not worried anymore, George. And on top of that, Ken, I a think lot Vanessa of went, huh? Ah. I yes. think Vanessa started yeah. going. On. <laughs> and Vanessa, guess how much of that was money you put in? Let's even say the nine percent it grows to two point nine million. How much money do you think you put in out of that two point nine million? Oh my gosh, I have no idea. Three hundred thousand. That's all you put in. Two point wow. six million was just growth, just compound interest. And so, get started now. We have a lot of options yeah. for self-employed people. So whoever's listening, they're going. I can't invest in retirement. Yes, you can. We have a whole blog called Five Investing Options for Self-Employed People. Go check it out. The SEP IRA, the Simple IRA, Individual Solo 401k. Well, tons of options out there for entrepreneurs. Vanessa, go on YouTube uh, later this afternoon, this evening. Show this clip, this segment to your husband, and you guys have a fun dream session about what life is going to be like when you're in your 60s with all that money. Woo! Game on. Oh, George, you're so good. This is The Ramsey Show. Your home is probably the biggest purchase you'll ever make. And with the real estate market like it is now, you'll need a mortgage company you can trust. That's Churchill Mortgage. You guys, buying a home is not a button push. It's a process. It takes building a relationship with an expert who will dig into the details and give you peace of mind without busting your budget. Churchill is one of the highest rated lenders in the country. And they're Ramsey trusted because they do what's right for you. Go to churchillmortgage.com to get started. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show, America. Thrilled to have you. It is your show. It's about you and your life. And we're thrilled to be able to walk alongside of you. I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell joins me. We're Ramsey Personalities, and we are your hosts today. 
And uh, let's get to it, shall we? 888 825 5225. Keith is going to join us now in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Keith, how can we help? Oh, yes. Me and my wife were having a lot of troubles just getting started on Baby Step One. We want to know, like, the best advice. Can you tell us what is, in your opinion, the problem or problems that are keeping you from getting started? Um, well, we, uh, her parents live with us. Her dad has dementia, Alzheimer's and all that. So we care for them. Mm -hmm. It's just, it seems like every time we think we're getting ahead, something knocks us back down. And this is attacking baby step one, just trying to get a thousand dollars in the bank. Yes. Yes. Tell me, and again, this is a very tough situation that you're in. So we, our hearts go out to you. This is, uh, I've, I've got some family, uh, my brother-in-law is dealing with this, and uh, it's devastating. So we, we, we want to tell you that we're sorry you're going through this, and this is a tough, tough journey. Um, can you – Is it, let me give you a couple options. Is this an income issue, meaning we don't have enough and we're scraping by, so any kind of uh, unexpected squall or a storm that pops up kind of kills the, 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 the momentum, uh, or is it something more than, than income? Just no discipline? Think, what, what do you think it is? I think it's more discipline. Because what? me and my wife, we make decent money, and it's just... What is decent? We feel we should, um, between us two, we make about 130 a year. Oh, okay. And then and then last year, we started doing an eBay and selling on eBay, and that brought us another 10000 roughly. Okay, so we can say you're in the 140 range. Yes. So, George, sounds like this is a budget issue. Yes. So far, it's a lot of feelings like, well, things are coming at us and I just feel like we can't. And what happens when you don't do the budget is you lean on feelings instead of the facts. And the budget tells all. And so when you list out the actual take home pay that ends up in your bank account, what does that amount to in a given month? Um, let's see. I'm roughly 3200 and my wife's around the same. Okay, so 6400 comes in, and you're saying we can't get a thousand together together out of the 6400. So where is that 6400 going? That's kind of what we're trying to figure out. Also, you know, like bills. And there's a solution for all of this. We can solve this very easily with an every dollar budget. And I'm going to help you out with that. We're going to give you the premium version on us to get you started. And it's really simple. On that smartphone app, you list out your income, and beneath that, all of your expenses, what you plan to spend in a given month. To make this easier, I would pull up your bank statement and go, what happened in the last month? Okay, here's the average for the utility bills. Oh, yeah, we have that subscription that comes out. We got to pay insurance. And so beyond the priorities, which is your four walls, food, utility, shelter, transportation, we'll add in insurance as a bonus. Everything beyond that, we would call non-necessities. Would you agree? Yes non-essentials. And that's the parts you need to cut out. Because I'm guessing if you looked at your budget, you probably think you're spending 500 on food. You're probably spending 1200 And so when yeah, you look that's... at... Is that accurate? That's most people's problem is the food category is out of yeah. control. And so... Yeah, that, that would be a big one. So I don't think there's much issue here. You make 6400 bucks. We just got to pay attention to where every one of those dollars is going. And next paycheck, you have a $1,000 emergency fund. I don't believe that there's these constant 1,000 plus emergencies hitting you guys. It's ankle okay. biters, and you're using the emergencies as an excuse as to why you're not going to follow through this plan and get on the budget. Keith, what do you do for a living? Uh, deliver beer. Oh, okay. Um, when I say this phrase to you, I'm just curious what your reaction is. Do you? Well, how do you feel about being reactive in life versus proactive? How does that hit you? Uh, I'm not. Do you think you're a reactive guy? You think you're just by nature, or are you a proactive guy? I think more reactive. Yeah, and and I agree. And by the way, there's no wrong or right here. And I'm not it's a self trying to label tool. You. I'm trying to get you to a place of what's going on right now. If I was going to boil it down to one thing, is you and your wife are reacting to your paycheck. You aren't being proactive. You aren't saying, "Here's what we're going to do with this money." You're just kind of going, wee, and we're just one day at a time and and one feeling at a time. 
And I think that if you could get that to go, wait a second, this is, and George is giving you every dollar. By the way, if you use every dollar, this is proactive. You are going to plug in numbers and you're going to begin to be intentional. That's what's so genius about every dollar, the budget tool. It, it, it creates a framework where I can be proactive. You happen to your money. Yeah. Instead of life just happening to you, yeah. and it's just, well, we'll hope we have money at the end of the month. Yeah. And I'm going to submit to you that the rest of your life is going to improve, too, if you jump into this. I'm going to put a little extra, uh, I think, motivation on this, not only to have money at the end of the month and not feel like you're always just reacting, but I think the rest of your life's going to improve as well. I yeah. think that this is – that's what I hope you get, Keith. No shame, but but maybe a mindset switch. Let's be proactive intentional, not just let everything happen to us. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. How much debt do you guys have? Um, probably roughly 50000 Okay. What kind of debt is that? Uh, uh, car loan, my wife's car, um, personal loan, a couple credit cards that we know we need to get rid of. Okay. Well, yeah. one thing you can do that's proactive is just cutting the cards up yeah cut them up today they haven't been serving you they got you to this place of stress you guys make amazing money you're hard-working people you're taking care of um you know the parents and i think you guys deserve a a life with more margin and options than this yeah right and so it might be time to sell the car if you can get some good money for it and downgrade to something in cash that will free you up even sooner what would you assume uh keith your total debt payments are every month. If you take all that debt you just told George about, what would you say roughly the number is you're paying out? Um, I need that Jeopardy music think, right now. Just give me a rough number. Yeah, probably, I'd, I'd guess probably 1500 Okay, two things I want to point out. Number one, remember my little speech about intentionality? One of the other yeah. intentionality things you need to do is be able to answer that question instantly. You you don't know right. what you don't know. You right. don't even know. And I'm not judging you. But, like, you don't have a clue what you're paying out. So that's – that's we got so some homework to let's, do. Let's get on that and let's go, oh, my gosh, I could give myself a $1,500 raise. Yeah, you're telling us you're having a hard time saving up 1000 We just showed you where 1500 exists every single month. And I got a sneaky yeah. suspicion it's more than fifteen hundred, given your Jeopardy uh, silence. You know. Now, is your wife yeah. bought in on this? Oh, she has one hundred percent. Yes. Okay. Right. Great. I would sit down with her tonight, and you're going to open that every dollar budget again. We're going to give it to you, and I want you to go through all of the numbers, lay it all out, so you both have accountability and transparency into what's going on in our financial life. And at first, it's going to be scary. You're going to probably throw up in your mouth a little bit, but. The next day, you're really? going to wake up going, I know exactly what we need to do. That's disgusting, I George. know, Ken. Did but you have to truth. take it there? That's what happens the first time you do the budget. You go, oh my gosh, I had no idea we had that much debt. I don't know that you throw up in your mouth all the time. Does well, that... I don't want to assume anything. Boy, I think you're really like, that was dark. I got dark quick. I'm sorry, Keith. I was over here going, oh. Bleh. That's how debt makes me feel, truly, Ken. I appreciate that. I'm having a little bit of fun. I like that. I thought you went you 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 went dark quick. As like, a guy who consistently tells people that you need a Tums, I thought you'd appreciate that. <laughs> I do appreciate the acid reflux. And I guess you're right. Sometimes that's what that, it, is. it makes it all the way up to the mouth. Yeah. D- that's even worse. <laughs> oh, gosh. You, t- you took me there. It was, it was a vivid image, George, and powerful. Well, so let's talk about every every dollar really quick. Yes, this uh, is our free app. This is huge for folks. It's a totally free app. You can go download it, everydollar.com. You can get a deal on the premium version, everydollar.com slash George. And that allows you to connect to your bank, track the transactions, and both you and your spouse can log into the same app on different phones and have that transparency and accountability. If you see the debt free screen, they always say the budget is the key. It is nope. freedom to spend. And those people aren't verping. Do you know what a verp is? I think I assume right now. It's a little bit of a burp, a little bit of vomit. You got to get rid of the verp. Every dollar will do it. This is The Ramsey Show.
Hey guys, Ramsey Solutions started small and grew fast. Because of that rapid growth, there were times when our systems slowed us down. That's why we switched to NetSuite. It works for us and it'll help your business too. Whether you're starting on a card table like I did or you're well on your way to becoming a multi-million dollar company, NetSuite can scale with you and help you communicate and plan better. Because you know your day-to-day up and down and sideways, but accounting, analytics, and supply chain are on another level. So maybe you're just not tech savvy. That can be okay. NetSuite will help at your speed and whatever your situation. More than 37,000 companies use NetSuite to know their numbers and their business better. So check out NetSuite today and find out how they can help you become the business you want to be five or 30 years from now. And right now, you can download NetSuite's free KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell joins me. And uh, boy, oh boy, it's that time of year. You know, it's the spring starting to kind of say, hey, we may be around the corner. I didn't see what... Uh, what all Punxsutawney said? Punxsutawney Phil. I think it's a, it's going to be a short winter. Is that right, Joe? Joe pays attention to these things. Thank you, He's Joe. got the Farmer's Almanac out at all yeah, times. He has a pocket version. You know, like you have that pocket version of the Constitution. I think you can get one of those of the far- <laughs> of the Farmer's Almanac. I don't know, folks. I'm making all this up. We have new people joining the show. You need to understand, George and I like to have a little bit of fun while we help you. Uh, but speaking of helping you, uh, you know where I was going with this, George. Taxes. Taxes are around the corner. You're always trying to talk about taxes. You know why? Because I hate taxes. That's true. I hate taxes. I always joke that if you could go back in time, you'd go to the Boston Tea Party. 100%. Just to throw some of that 100%. tea on board. I would, have had, I would have been, per capita, more boxes of tea thrown into the Boston Harbor than anybody else. Oh, what a time. I, I would have been that guy. Epic. N- no question about it. Uh, I'm for a flat tax. That's not why I'm talking about it. But if I was president for a day... That would be my deal. Well, our goal is to help make taxes as painless as possible. Yeah. And we've got a tax tip for you today, and here it is. You've got two choices for claiming tax deductions, and you've got to understand the difference because this can save you big bucks. You can either take the standard deduction or itemize your deductions. So both options can lower your tax bill, but which one is best? Well, it depends. So let's take a closer look. Taking the standard deduction, that's the easiest option. It's the thing most people do. It's what makes the most sense for a lot of folks. It subtracts a set amount from your taxable income based on your filing status. So let's say you're single, you make 65 grand. Standard deduction knocks off close to 14 grand. So you just pay taxes on 51,000 of your income instead of the full 65. Mm -hmm. So that's like an automatic tax freebie. Itemizing takes more work because you need to subtract all of your deductible expenses from taxable income one by one. So medical expenses, charitable gifts, state sales taxes, if that adds up to more than the standard deduction, it's worth it to itemize. And many find out it's not worth it. So if you want more help making sense of income taxes, you want to file with confidence, be sure to go to RamseySolutions.com slash tax. We've got tons of resources there for you. We'll help you figure out if you should work with a pro, if you want to self-file using Ramsey Smart Tax. A lot of great options out there. Yeah, good stuff. Get it done. Good stuff, George. Great, great. Hope that was inspirational. No. Okay. Nothing about paying taxes is inspiring. That has nothing to do with you. I thought you did a wonderful job, but Thank it's, you. it's taxes, for heaven's sakes. Get it done. Get All right, it out let's of your life. go to Kena now, who is joining us in the Tampa, Florida area. Kena, how can we help? Hello. So I am here because I need a little help with introductory tools and resources. I'm at around seventy-five dollars to $80,000 in student loan debt, and I need some help with next steps on how to be able to afford a home within a year as a single woman, uh, sustain my lifestyle, and build my credit. Wow, you've got a very aggressive agenda. We want to get it done fast. <laughs> yeah, why, why a year to Sorry be a homeowner? Um, I would honestly just say it's just the stage and age I am. I'm, this is just one of my goals. Maybe How old are you? Sense. 35. 35. By the way, I should point out that for men, uh, the only place you can ask a woman's age is in a show like this. This show. 
<laughs> the context matters. I, I, I have to kind of remind guys from time to time. And I'm sure if we We have a see... special dispensation here on the show that I get to ask ladies how old they are. And it's on the phone. If we could see Kina, I would assume 25 max. Yeah, well, that's... Oh, you I always... appreciate that. Yeah, look, go. look, 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 boy, you just... That was cheap. I'm a charmer. I got the riz, compliment. as the kids say. All right, the reason I asked that, Kina, is because I understand you're feeling that pressure, but let's... Can we, for the sake of this conversation... That George is going to guide you through. Can we take that year off the table? Let's get that 12-month pressure cooker of getting a house. Can we take that off the table, Keena, just for the next few minutes? Sure thing. Okay, good. All right, George. All right, let's address the three. You said, I want to afford a house, and you want to do that in a year. We said we're taking that off the table, George. Were you listening? We are. But here's what okay. I want to talk to you about. There's a, a rhythm and an order to this. And the problem is a lot of people, while drowning in debt with no emergency savings, go, I got to get a house. I got to get a house. Rent's expensive. Renting is a sin. I'm just going to jump into a house. And that causes them to be house poor, where they barely can afford the mortgage now. They got nothing down, no equity. And it creates a, a place where the house is a burden instead of a blessing. And that's the heart behind this. Okay. So once you're debt free with an emergency fund, then save up for the down payment and set that goal of home ownership. That's the time and place. Next on the list, okay. you said I want to sustain my lifestyle. Tell me about this lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Okay. So just to be honest, I love to explore and travel, and I've given up some of those things as a sacrifice for me to meet some of my goals. Good. Okay. So you're saying <laughs> I want to tr- mostly travel is what you mean by lifestyle? Yes. Okay. And there, again, there will be a time and place for that once we clean up the debt. Because what do your payments add up to every month? About $600 is going out altogether. I'm in a process where I'll be in, uh, in the near future trying to figure out if I want to consolidate my student loans or... What would be the purpose of consolidation? I don't know. I'm just being honest. He's throwing up there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you heard that. You heard I that love your honesty. I love that. Yeah. A lot of people think debt consolidation is somehow going to make the debt go away or go away faster. And the truth is a lot of times it doesn't. So there can okay. be a place in time where student loan consolidation makes sense. Uh, but for most people, it just makes them feel like they did something instead mm-hmm. of doing the hard thing, which is getting rid of the student loans and actually paying the okay. principal down. So let's put that on the table as well for now. Last thing, you said, I want to build my credit. What was the yes. purpose of building your credit? Again, I am very new to all of this, so I'm just hearing that those are the steps that I need to take because I can have a savings. However, if your credit and everything does not match, you, you won't get that far. If your savings and credit don't match, what does that mean? Okay, so for an example, I can save the money. However, when it's time, this is, again, what I've been informed of. It, when it's time to begin the home buying process, if I don't have a certain credit score or if it's in a, not in a certain area, then I won't be considered. So I do need to build my credit because only only thing I typically have right now is my student loans and one credit card. Okay. So this is the same old message, George, we confront all the time. You can't get a house if you don't have a good credit score, right? I've heard it. The problem is it's a bold-faced lie, and I know that because Uh I I bought a house without a credit score, Keen. I got a mortgage without a credit score. Mm -hmm. I didn't have debt, and 6 to 12 months later, my credit score disappeared into the abyss. I didn't have a credit history, and I worked with, you know, Churchill Mortgage. A lot of companies out there do this. Churchill Mortgage is the one that we've trusted for decades to help people buy a house without a credit score, and they can help you too once you get to that point. I would also like to point something out, Kina, that George won't say because he's very humble— But George's life has gotten measurably better since that as well in the form of great, awesome life. Now a beautiful little baby girl. Oh, and by the way, he's a number one bestselling author and he's making more money than he ever made before all of that. So this idea of a credit score being the foundation of a better life is also garbage. Okay. And I'm going to send you a gift, Kina, to help explain this because it's hard to do in a quick radio call. I wrote a book called Breaking Free from Broke, and there's a whole chapter on credit scores. There's a whole chapter on credit cards. And so my one ask is that you read it before you make any other financial decisions. Okay, I will. (laughs) And I'm so glad you're new to our crew. And so I want to welcome you to this tribe of weirdos who goes like, hey, what if we didn't have debt? What if we stopped playing this weird rat maze game of trying to get the cheese of a high credit score to get more debt, to get a high credit score, to get more debt. Hey, Keenan, we've only got about a minute, so I wanted to ask really quick for George and I, uh, how much is your credit card debt? 
As of right now, about thirty five hundred. Right. So that's the first one you attack. How quickly could you pay off at thirty five hundred if you got real intentional? Less than a month. Boom. Ooh. What's your income? I would say about sixty five thousand, but that would mean I'm putting I'm going in my savings and then how much do you have in savings? As of right now, I have about fourteen thousand five hundred in savings. Woo! Oh boy. You know what's gone today? That credit card payment. Okay. Truly, that savings is a it's a false security blanket because yeah. you owe eighty three thousand dollars to lenders, and so I, I want you to have no payments, then restock the emergency fund. So the seven baby steps are what we teach: thousand bucks starter, then attack all the consumer debt. My book, Breaking Free from Broke, will walk you through it. Hang on the line, Skyler will make sure you get that book in the mail, the ebook, audiobook, whatever you want. We'll send it to you. Thanks for the call, Kena. Man, Kena's going to be traveling in the not too distant. Future. change i love it great stuff thanks for the call keenan welcome to the tribe hey don't move we gotta take a couple commercials your way and george and i are gonna have fun in the break and then we'll be back before you know it this is the ramsey show If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you wanna make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything, from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Go to Blinds.com now to get up to 50% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell joins me. And uh, it's such a great crowd in the lobby today. A uh, fine-looking group of people, enthusiastic, and from all over. Oh, they're giving us the uh, whoop. What do you I call guess, that? I guess this is like a spring break week for a lot of folks. Oh, is that right? Okay. No, I'm getting a lot of head nods. Just people hanging out on a yeah. Friday. And we want to. There they go. There. If you're watching look on YouTube, at that. look at. Oh, look at you in the background on the jumbo truck. Oh, that's nice. I made a cameo there. Yeah, and uh, we love when folks come. So I just want to say it's always great to meet folks uh, during commercial breaks. We go out twice go every out. hour. Yeah, and so come see us. We'd love to see you. And honestly, we're all Enneagram 3s, and we need people looking at us. We need the affirmation and validation. We, Yeah, it's kind of when, when we have some days where not a lot of people in the lobby, it's kind of like... Yeah. Staring out into the abyss. Yeah, so we're unhealthy and, and, and performers, and we Throws need Ken into an that. existential crisis. <laughs> yeah, it does. Can't have that. I don't know what to do. It's a, it's a total mess. Uh, but no, come see us, uh, RamseySolutions.com, and check out the schedule, and we'd love to host you. All right, let's go to Albany, New York, where Sarah is. Sarah, how can we help? Hi, thanks for taking my call. Yeah, you, sh- um, you bet. What's up? First, I have just some active, an active senior this year, and I'm trying to do the budgeting app, and I'm not being very successful with trying to plan accordingly for his unexpected fees. That Activity? Are we yeah. talking sports, okay. band? What, what are we saying? Yeah, I know this feeling. Sports. i got three teens right now. So give us an example, maybe over the last two months, of stuff that's unexpected that popped up. Um, so we need track sneakers and track cleats, which I don't know. Spikes, I'm sorry. Um, and we need baseball cleats and a new bat and probably apparel to go with both. All right, so I'm, not I'm very familiar. I'm very familiar. Uh, and, and when did we find out that he was going to do track and baseball? Um, last night. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. <laughs> he just decided? He just what, – what, tell me what that's like. So he is very indecisive. So he always played baseball for years, and he his coach – no longer is at the school that he's at. So then he decided he wasn't going to do baseball. He was going to do track. So that's where my mindset was. Okay, we're going to do track, some running shoes, and these bikes. And okay, how long whatever. ago? How long ago was this conversation that you just described? Um, about the about the deciding I'm, to do I'm gonna. Track I'm not going to do of, baseball. I'm going to do track. Um, oh. that was probably about I would say two three weeks ago. Okay, here here's where I'm going with all this. Uh, well, let me ask you another question. Uh, did you talk to him several months ago, let's say in the before Christmas when maybe football and basketball, or whatever he was playing before ended, did you guys say, okay, what are you planning to do next semester as it relates to sports? Did that conversation happen? No, because I just assumed it would be baseball. Okay. The coach actually just got dismissed like probably two weeks ago. Okay. Or three weeks ago. It all was about the same time when he told me that he was going to do track instead of baseball when that coach had left. I get it. And life happens like that. But the, where I'm going with this, and George, I know I'm, I'm, I'm on this thing, but I, I, th- this is sort of a money issue, but it's sort of not. Th- this is a, as a parent, and I understand this. So I'm not saying this from judgment. I'm saying I get it. And George knows all three of my kids. They're all very active in things. We would sit down with our kids ahead of time and go, hey, are you playing spring sports? Uh, for this very reason, because there are some yeah. significant, you know, amounts of money. For instance, um, our oldest son was talking about wrestling and he decided not to. And this is his senior year. And wrestling is a real big commitment because of the time traveling. The equipment's not expensive, but, you know, and so you you have to this is not like, well, my son's activities are causing a budget issue. I think this is communication and, and expectations. And expectations, yeah. Does he know how much all of this stuff costs? Yeah, he just thinks that I have an, an never-ending. There's the new conversation. Oh, hello. Hey, son, I love you. Love that you want to do all this stuff. We don't have this like endless pool right. of money sitting around. We have financial goals. Yeah. We're trying to get out of debt. We're trying to do this. Yeah. So we need to figure out a way to cover these expenses. That might mean he works part-time to help cover it. Hello. Is that in the picture? Uh, no, and I'll be honest, he thinks that he, I'm going to use the word entitled, um, because he gets a benefit from his dad that passed, so he thinks that that money he is entitled to, so it doesn't matter what he asks for, but that's what that money is for. You know, the quickest way to to become not entitled? Hmm. Do you know? No. Okay, this is great. I've been dying to say this. It's to take the entitlement away. Okay. I'm not. And and how I'm, do you do that? <laughs> really simple conversation. Hard conversation. Hey, this money that you got from your father, I'm in charge of this money. Mm-hmm. I get to decide where it's best spent. And I am not a sporting goods store. This money does not represent a sporting goods store. George, am I being too harsh? No. But guess what? He's going to have some big feelings. Well, that's fine, but that's, again, the way to break entitlement is to remove the entitlement. So the, there's an actual physical entitlement, okay, that, like, so we talk about entitlements in government language, which, by the way, for all you conservatives out there, you're going to love the next 30 seconds. But the bottom line is, is that when we talk about an entitlement, it is a benefit. That's how it's used in that language. So so it's it's a noun as that. Is everybody following with me in the lobby so that I know I'm making this? So entitlement in the form of a benefit is a noun. But then when we when, when it gets into an expectation of the noun, it becomes an attitude. Are you still following me out in the lobby so I know I'm making this? So what's happened is... It's become an attitude issue. So in order to get rid of the attitude of entitlement, what do we have to do? We have to remove the noun, the object. That's the lesson. So, okay. I get what you're saying completely. I guess I'm trying to think. So he is also a senior. Um, so that's a hard that's a hard thing to adjust now because no. you know, I'm not going to take any of that away from him. So I'll figure that out, which is fine. But I'm thinking of like, long-term for for 
things that would be unexpected like that. So would you just do it as because it wouldn't fall into your emergency fund section. So no, I guess that you either have to move it from a different budget category or you create a miscellaneous line item for this kind of catch all Uh junk drawer of we know something's going to come up. So let's put 100 bucks away or 50 bucks away every month to cover this stuff. And then I would also go, hey, buddy, you're now in charge of finding used a a used baseball bat from Facebook Marketplace. And you're going to go meet up and I'll give you the 10 bucks. And so he needs to have some skin in the game instead of just deciding mom is an unlimited piggy bank and she's going to do all the work for me. Yeah. Or he chooses, hey, son, you get to do one sport. And here's the budget we have for this, and you need to make this work. Wow. That level of critical thinking will cause him to make different decisions. Right. He's got to go get a part-time job. And I think he needs a part-time job. Yeah. Okay. You want some nice track <laughs> shoes? That will get Fantastic. rid of the entitlement. When go he starts to use poop. his own money, yeah. it changes yeah. entitlement. Yeah. I, it really yeah, does. Yeah, you're not wrong. And you're it gives him freedom and I, independence. I to do that. I but, get it. But listen, Sarah, we're not we're – not, um, trying to pour guilt on you or just trying to be your friends and say, I have to say things to my kids that they don't like all the time. Feels like all the time these days. I got three teenagers. Feels like it's just I'm one constant irritant. Mm, I felt well, that way about you. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, for a lot for, of reasons. For a lot of reasons. But I, but I, and I'm trying to encourage you. I don't want to you to be discouraged. I mean, was this a decent amount of money that he inherited? Yeah. I think it's for yeah, his future. And he gets it when he becomes I an did. adult, or I what's did the plan? Some of his money, I did invest it. I put it in his CD for him for later in life. So and he's going to be I real thankful, put, when, yeah. Because right now he could blow that money oh, as a my senior gosh. on who knows what. And yeah. so I think you're doing the right thing before he's an adult. And the only thing he's truly entitled to, as your son, is food, shelter, and transportation, utilities, the basics to survive insurance you're doing all of that for him put a bow on the kitchen sink and say here you go son here's the gift and that will cause him to look differently at this yeah versus well i want to do the third sport and mom i need another hundred bucks for this yeah and so just tell him I hey son i'm okay covering it he's one of five from my ex-husband and like we worked together when we had the other so there wasn't really a financial burden on on myself to say right so now that he's the only one that went to high school without his dad, I do. I feel like I gave him that reign to feel that entitlement because it's I was okay, never take Sarah. That Sarah, you're a good mom. You're a good mom. You released the guilt. Great, but go ahead and start making these changes on his entitlement thinking around money. It's been a good hour. Thank you all for calling. Thank you, George, for Thanks, hanging guys. out with me. This is the Ramsey Show. Solutions. This is the Ramsey Show. It's where we help you win in your life, win with your money, win in your work, and win with your relationships. I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell joins me. We're having a blast, and we want to help you. So let's go. Phone lines are open. 888-825-5225. 888-825-5225. Let's start this hour out in Huntsville, Alabama, not far from here. Chris is on the line. Chris, how can we help? Hey, yeah, I have a question about some stock purchasing options I have through my work. Okay. So um, we uh, we get offered the ability to put up to ten percent of our stock or our paycheck into the program. I work for a tech company. Um, so what happens is after six months, we get fifteen percent off the lowest, either the entry or the exit of that six months. And, um, my wife and I are going through FPU. We're in, uh, we're currently on baby step three and, um, just trying to figure out if that's something I'm able to do at this point. Cause we only have a certain window where we're able to, um, opt into this and then, um, we can always decrease it at any point, but opting in is only a small window and just trying to get some, um, some more guidance 
to see what we can best do for us, and especially we're um, going through FP right now. So, so what's your next financial goal? Um, so we have about twelve thousand saved up. Um, we have a son with a heart defect, so we're doing the six months um, emergency fund, which we think is about nineteen twenty thousand, and we're going to buffer it possibly a little bit more with about two thousand specifically for medical expenses. So we're about 12,000. Our goal is to get about 22 for the emergency fund. Cool. All right. And you're wondering, hey, should I opt in now? When, when is the next time you could opt in if it wasn't now? Uh, the next time would be six months from now. Oh, okay. And you should have your emergency fund done when, based on your estimations? Um, the I'm looking at my wife right now. Emergency fund, we can get done in, she says, about three to four months. Okay. I would just opt into the next six month mark because yep. you still have retirement options. Even if you guys then fully funded the emergency fund, you then begin investing 15% of your income into retirement plans. And truthfully, the the employee stock purchase program, which is what you're talking about, wouldn't be a, a part of your normal retirement investing. And so this would be, if you want to use some fund money outside of the 15% to get some stocks, that's totally fine. But again, we don't recommend single stocks because of the volatility. And so I, I'm yes, guessing sir. you believe in this company. It's probably doing well, um, but it's still risky. And for those reasons, I wouldn't put too much stake in it. Okay. Yeah. It, I mean, yeah, it is. It's, and it's the tech field. So I mean, yes, it's over history. It's always going up. Um but yeah, it, it definitely you see the ups and the downs. And I've I worked for the company for five years, so I've used it in the past. It allowed us to to buy a car and you know help put a down payment on a house, things like that. Um, but we've redirected our mindsets going through um, y'all's programs and stuff. So I love just, it. Um, well, stay focused. I appreciate trying to. Get that, so. Yeah, I wouldn't be investing while trying to save up the emergency fund because what happens is the emergency hits yeah. and all of a sudden you go, oh my gosh, we have to go back into debt. We weren't ready. So build this foundation, make savings a priority, investing will come later, yep. and I would still focus on retirement plans before touching single stocks. Yep. Chris, you're doing the right okay. thing. You're being a great husband and a great dad. Uh, your brain's in the right place. You are not missing out. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. If you follow the baby steps, you're going to be plenty fine when it comes time to pull retirement money. So stay the course. Don't feel like you're missing out. And we're wishing your kid all the best. Yeah, absolutely. Man, that's that's mm. tough stuff. But, uh, you know, that's where you get a lot of peace at night is to have that cash there in case we need to have some extra for a very important procedure. Yeah. And uh, that trumps any single phew, stock out there. For I sure. mean, I, 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 I always slept with a little bit more peace, you know, uh, when the kids were younger and, you know, you start. You know, of course, now, good grief, it doesn't change. You know, they're teenagers and going to be young adults before you know it. And you just, you want to have that peace that I can, I can handle an emergency. And uh, that's why this works. I, I, you know, just to the parents that are thinking about getting on the baby steps, can I just appeal to you? If nothing else works, the peace of being a parent uh, with our baby steps is so much greater. Let's go to Bobby in Austin, Texas right now. Bobby, how can we help? Hi, guys. Hope you all are doing good today. We are having too much fun, I think. What's going on with you? <laughs> well, I'm a military retiree, and i got a great job now. My wife, been married, uh, my wife and I have been married almost so it'll be 28 years this year. Congrats. Uh, what, uh, what arm of the service were you in? Air Force. Air always. Force. Come on. All Very right. Cool. Well, you're a great American. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Oh, thanks so much. I appreciate your support. Um, well, our kids are grown. We've got grandkids now, and we did a really good job paying off debt. Uh, we've just built our forever home, but I've not saved a, very much at all for retirement. And so I'm kind of, I'm almost 50. I'd like to know just kind of where I should go from here. Of like, what's the best way to make sure that we're going to be okay? Uh, and it's, you know, it's late to get started. I wish I would have did it 20 years ago. Yeah. What's your, do you have a military retirement? I do. What it's, will that uh, add up to, and when will it hit? Uh, I'm already getting it, to, uh, so I was active duty, so uh, it's twenty. It's thirty three thousand a year. Okay, so it's a good starter, but it's not going to be enough to retire on. Right, it's, it's the only passive income I have. That and my VA disability is about forty thousand. Okay, so we got forty grand as kind of our base, and so what are your monthly expenses right now? Um, well, I'm also full-time employed. I'm not fully retired yet. I'm, so I'm a consultant. I make 149000 Wonderful. Good for you. Is that household income? So, Is there anyone else working? 
Uh, no, that's, that's just me. So the 149 and the 33 are taxed, and then, of course, the, the 40 is tax-free. And the, okay. 40, the 40 is every year for how long? Uh, that's uh, forever. That's, oh, is the 40 uh, on top uh, of the 33? I don't, think, I don't think you caught that. He's yeah. He's got a disability of 40 a year for Plus his life. So he's got a $73,000 base. Wow. In benefits. That helps, and that's guaranteed for that's life. Correct. Okay. Right. So the good news is you don't need a massively large nest egg. No. But I would do my best to do as much as I can with that amazing income. How old are you? 47. Okay. Do you have any retirement plans through your current employer? Uh, I do have a 401k, and I rolled over all the little ones I had when I was trying to find a good transition job out of the military. Okay. I think I've got 43000 in it maybe. Right. Not a lot. To the 401k. You're going to catch like up 11, fast. 11 percent right now. Yeah. It's mostly uh, ETF. And you got a mortgage? I do. I have a massive mortgage. Oh boy. What's that <laughs> add up to? What's the uh, loan? Uh, five. It was. It was six fifteen, and we're down to five thirteen. Okay. Do you have any debt? Just a house. Just a house. Worked okay. Really hard to pay it off. That's our only thing. Our and we're paying. The payment is 3100 I think, and we're paying like 7000 Good. Good for you. Well, outside of that, I would begin investing 15% of my income into a 401k. If you have a Roth 401k, that's great because that money's going to grow tax-free with after-tax money. So that's 1860 about you should be putting in that retirement account, and that will help you create a nice little nest egg over the next 20 years. So that would be my focus, my friend. That'll add up. Yeah, you're going to be fine. And again, you are a great American. You're off and running in this new direction. Love this story. Thank you for the call. All right, we'll be right back. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, guys, you know this, but I'll say it anyway. College is freaking expensive, and student loans are out of control. The average private student loan debt in 2023 was $55,000. So if you're in over your head with private student loan debt, don't beat yourself up. Look, we've all made mistakes with money in the past. What matters is doing something about it now. So if you're in distress with private student loans, that's private, not federal student loans, call Y-Refi. Y-Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. To learn more about this custom refinancing option, call 844-2-RAMSEY or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. The phone number to jump in on the conversation about your life is 888-825-5225. 888 I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell joins me. And uh, today's question, George, comes from Matt in Ohio. Here we go. After getting a degree and Wait a second. I think you're supposed to read that. It doesn't matter. You're a great reader. Yeah. It's very comforting. Yeah, I feel like I've already thrown the ball to you. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Matt in Ohio says, after getting a degree in corporate accounting, I went to work for an accounting firm but did not enjoy the work, so I quit. I then took a part-time job as a baker at a local restaurant, and after talking to the owner about my work experience, she asked me to switch into a business development role. Now I'm doing more work than anticipated and getting paid the same. However, I love the role and realize that this is my first shot at getting a job in this area. I don't want to ask for more pay because I feel that this is my proving ground and that I should embrace it. On the other hand, I'm analyzing their books and creating a more organized system for them, as well as taking on business growth projects. We have a goal of increasing revenue by 20% this year. Should I continue as is or create my own company and charge them as a client? Well, very interesting. Well, um... Matt, here's what I think. I, I think that you really enjoy this role and you see an opportunity for growth. Um, 
I would just talk to them about workload. I would not talk about pay first. If we lead with pay, sometimes it creates an awkward environment and it kind of puts the leader in a defensive posture. And so I would go in in this situation and go, I am thrilled about this role. I love it. I see a track for just exciting growth and what I can do for the company. Um, however, um, my workload is starting to become an issue. And so we've led with, I love the job. I'm grateful. Uh, but I need your, I need your help because the workload issue is there's a lot more that I'm doing now. And I would love to talk about my growth opportunities as it relates to compensation along with responsibility. Can we talk about a growth plan that includes responsibility and compensation? And I think when you set it that way, two things happen. Number one, you posture it, George, in the best way possible so it doesn't look like a demand and, and I deserve. That always puts that gives somebody a chance to kind of hit the ball back. And we don't want that. We want to put the ball in their lap, right, and, and let them take some ownership. So that's the first thing it does. The second thing it does is their response to this is going to reveal a lot. And it will reveal the answer to the last question. Should I just go do this on my own and charge them as clients? So when you do it this way, let me tell you what a healthy leader does. A healthy leader goes, thanks for sharing this with me. We are loving what you're doing. You're going to find out what how they value you. And so that's why you do it this way. So it could open up the door to growth in a healthy situation with a healthy leader, or it will reveal that it's going to be an exit strategy if it's an unhealthy situation with an unhealthy leader. I like that. And I'm going to add to this. He said, I, I'm, I took a part-time job and now I'm in this role. So I'm wondering if he's even working full-time at this juncture. Yeah, it's hard to say. I wondered the same thing. We don't have the details there. So it was part-time. And so are you still getting part-time pay for full-time hours? If that's the case, that's this, what is I'm an, wondering. this is an easier discussion. So, But you still got to go into it with that. The other part of this is if he's wanting to start his own kind of consulting company. I think maybe. it's too soon for that. He, he could see, hey, can I get some extra, can I get some clients outside of this one? Sure. First, and then you can jump ship. When I you got, agree. I got three clients. I'm going to leave and do this full time. But hey, I'd love to keep you guys on as a client. Yeah. Because if he does this now and they say no, yeah. and he does, he gets fired. That leaves leaves him in a real lurch. Yeah. Really good insight there. Good stuff. Uh, thank you for the question, Matt. All right, let's go to Michael in Toledo, Ohio. Michael, how can we help? Hello, sir. How are you? Good. What are you doing? Um, currently I am drinking a cup of coffee right now and just got off of work. Oh, it's exciting. I thought I'd mix it up every once in a while. I like that. Like, what are you doing? And I like he had a good answer. He really painted the picture for Guy's us. Guys enjoying a post-work cup of Joe. I like oh, that. always. Now I got to ask for George really quick. Is it, you got any cream and sugar in it? Like Ken would drink it or are you, are you a little snooty like George and it's just all black? How is that snooty? You're snooty about it. <laughs> Somehow I'm a diva because he's I not, put nothing in he, my coffee. He's not snooty, but t people that tend to drink their coffee black, they kind of judge the rest of us that like to doctor it up. 100%. See, there's a guy in the lobby shaking his hand. He shaking his head. He agrees. That's fine. What say you, Michael? Uh, so today, I, I usually I just do straight black coffee. However, if I'm feeling a little frisky, I'll throw some cream and sugar in there. Welcome to the <laughs> Frisky Club. All right. Very good. All right. Now we got that out of the way, Michael. How can we help? Uh, I just want to say thank you for uh, taking my phone call in the first place. Um, sure. So it involves around my home. So currently, uh, my wife and I, I'm 29 years old, been married for five. Uh, we completed uh, the baby steps one, two, and three, and we're on to the fourth. So my general question is, I have 110000 in investment accounts, uh, non-Roth, non-IRA, just straight individual tax. Just a taxable brokerage account? Yeah, okay. and then um, our mortgage is only one ten. So should I drain Ooh. my investment and pay off my mortgage completely and be completely debt free, or just continue investing fifteen percent of the income and just dabble at the mortgage every month to pay it off? What was the purpose later? of this taxable brokerage account? Um, so my taxable brokerage account, um, my aim was for a dividend growth. So, like right now, per year, it's about a 10% dividend growth rate with our capital gains. Okay. So, what will the tax burden be if you liquidate this entire account? Tax burden will be... Is it long-term uh, capital gains? Income. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. 
So I would factor that into the equation. So what will it be? Do we know? Uh, around 20%. Okay. 20% of the 110 is what you'd end up paying in taxes. And how much do you guys have in savings? Uh, we have a six month emergency fund totaling about 20 grand. Wow. It's fantastic. Well, you know what? The emergency fund can, t- if you needed to, um, it can now get a little lower once you don't have a mortgage payment to cover. True. true. What's your mortgage yeah, payment? Our mortgage is about seven, uh, 777 with a 2.2 interest rate. Okay. And that includes property taxes, homeowners insurance, all that? Yep, that's uh, everything and, I lumped in. I got, wow. I got to ask another question, George, for you. I need to get you the judge uh, g- uh, gavel and robe because I'm need actually— a tiny gavel. I, you need a tiny gavel. I, I'm interested to see what you're going to say on this one because I don't think this one is as clear-cut as maybe some people think it is. That's all I'm going to say. But I am curious. When would you pay off the house? I'm doing it today. I did. I know that. I'm saying I'm if too he excited doesn't about it. do that, okay. When would you pay off the house, Michael? If you didn't uh, liquidate the uh, joint brokerage, if you just did 15 percent investing into retirement and anything extra, you threw at the principal. On when the mortgage. would you pay it off? Uh, so actually, I did the math on that. Ah, so I knew it. Currently, Figured he did. He's a smart man. <laughs> we made the mistake though of doing a 30 year. This is before I took the, the baby steps. Sure. So we're doing. Um, about an extra 500 a month towards the payment. And then our pay- payoff date would be 2041. Oh, okay. So we're talking a good 17 years from now. I didn't realize yes, that. Sir, yeah. That's a long time to hang on to a payment when you could be done with it today. All right, I'm with you, George. I was just trying to play it a little bit. And I appreciate that, Ken. But it's too long. I yeah. didn't realize it was going to take that long to pay it off. It's a really small yeah. amount. I would liquidate it. Yeah. I'd pay off the mortgage, and then yeah. I'd be ready come tax time and put that money aside in a separate account. Gosh, I hate how much? Pay. What's your household income? Um, so currently, I make about seventy-five after tax. My wife take home after tax is about forty-four. Amazing! Wow. So you guys are making yeah. close to two hundred gross. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I make seventy-seven. She makes forty-four thousand. You're after saying tax. after tax. So Yes. Okay. I'm just so that like feel, that's one, a high, yeah, 1 170, 180 gross. Around there, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, here's I'm the deal, you, George. Even if you still had 250 bucks in insurance and property taxes, 500 bucks freed up from 29 to 67 invested is 2.5 million dollars that you would create just by freeing up that mortgage payment mm-hmm. and investing it. So just think about it that wow. way. You're not really losing. No. It just hurts cuz you've worked hard to build this investment portfolio yeah. and you're taking a temporary cut for long-term gain, my friend. Pay it off today. If you regret it, you can always go get another mortgage. The banks are happy to give you that money. It's a very good point, George. Although we would really recommend you don't, don't do, do it. it. Please don't. All right, George, you're right. Yes. Good job. Not every day you get to say that. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, I've told you before about Christian Healthcare Ministries, a health cost sharing ministry. But listen to Jenna, a CHM member. She says, one of my biggest concerns about entrepreneurship and motherhood was figuring out how to take care of our health expenses. But we have found a solution that works for us in an incredible way. She loves that with CHM, she can help other families who need it and receive help back when her own family has an eligible medical event. CHM has been a godsend for Jenna. That's her CHM story, and it could be yours. Learn more and join at chministries.org slash budget. This is The Ramsey Show. We're excited that you are with us. We're here to help you win in your money and win in your work, win in your relationships. All three of those areas are absolutely connected. 
uh, to have a wholesome and healthy life. If you're failing or suffering, losing in any of those areas, I promise you it affects the others. And so we want to help you. And that's what we do here on The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. George Camel joins me. The phone number to jump in is 888 825 Let's go to Las Vegas. And James is there. James, how can we help? Hi there. Uh, thanks for taking the call. Um, sure. I We are on step four, and we were marching towards step six when I was recently diagnosed with leukemia. And it's, um, oh, oh so no. it's shift, 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 shift. Hey, we're blessed in so many ways, and, and it's uh, the slow kind. So I'm going to be here for a while. But okay. what, taking a shorter term view on our investment horizon or strategy, we, we have about $100,000 where we'd like to set up. Uh, uh, so my wife can can support herself when my income goes away. I'm the primary uh, on this, and so w- with that hundred thousand, our, our choice is the way we see it is I like recast our current to try to drive that payment down or, or punch out by by a, a cheaper house or or something like that. And, and just love your take on 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 the strategies for moving about a hundred grand out. Um, putting it to work for us okay. on a shortened time frame. All right, let's let's gather some facts here. Um, so uh, how much do you owe on your current home, and what is it worth? Uh, it's it's worth about uh, 470 and we owe just over four on it. Okay. And what other, what other investments do you have, or what kind of insurance? Give us a whole picture here of what we're dealing with. So I have a term life insurance that unfortunately I, I, I responsibly bought it about 18 years ago. I got about two years left before it goes away. And so I, I, I'm probably not, I'll probably be here for that to expire, thankfully. Okay. Um, but then obviously the challenge on getting an, another term. Okay. Um, have some investment accounts, but uh, we're, we're convinced we should probably let them sit tight for right now. Sure. And there's not very much in there. Probably less and so the $100,000 is above and beyond your emergency fund? Uh, it's commingled with that. Our emergency fund would be probably forty of that. Okay, so we'll call it. So you got sixty thousand to play with here. Yeah. And what would be the goal of this sixty? If you could snap your fingers. Uh, uh, boy. Well, to 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 invest it in such a way that that when my income goes away, that my wife would be able to either to have the most flexibility, I guess, either to stay in the, the current house, but not need. Uh, at, at where we're at right now, um, her income would not. She'd have to move. She'd have to punch out. For what sure. is she making right now? About forty. And what are you making? Uh, about one fifty. Wow, sizable difference there. So part of it is, I would begin to make a budget just based off of her income and see what would be a sustainable life without your income being in the picture that she could afford. And that might mean we downgrade severely in house. Do you guys need to have this house right now, or could you downgrade to an apartment? Could you rent? Yes, we could do all that. Okay. We don't need it. I would be leaning that direction myself. I don't know that a recast is going to change much. You could do it later on, but with not having much equity, it's not going to change the game, and you still would need to make a lump sum payment. So you might need to take that 60, lump sum it. It'll still cost you a few hundred bucks to do a recast, and then it would bring your payment down. Yep. So it's something to consider. The other thing to consider is a guaranteed issue policy. Have you heard about these? Uh, I have not. Okay. This is something that won't give you a ton of coverage. It is expensive, but it is an option for folks that are in your shoes that can't get traditional life insurance. And so it has a maximum, you know, you might get 25 grand of coverage and it might cost you 1400 bucks a year. But that's something you okay. can do to at least, you know, cover cover final expenses and, and help cover a few other things while kind of adding a one layer of protection. But the best thing you guys can do it. is take the majority of your income and throw it into savings yep. and investments right now while you're still with us. And I hope you're with us for goodness a long, 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 long time. And I hope you beat this thing. Me too. And it, I, I should be for, for a while. Good. For sure. Good. So if I you would, continue I'd making this money, yeah. If I mean, what's the mortgage payment right now? Uh, Twenty five hundred. Oh, I, I, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm, I, I would sell this house. You just don't have a ton of equity in it, and it's just something yeah. I would. If I let me just say it this way, if I was in your shoes, I would be doing that because I would not want Stacy to have to deal with selling the house. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't want her to deal for one second 
with how am I going to live on 40? I'm going to have to do this. I'd want to take all of the decisions away from her and, and just allow her to grieve and move on with her life. And so I would sell the house. You guys downsize. You just got a $30,000 raise the minute you yeah. guys, you know, and I understand. And if you can pay for something cash, that's where I'm assuming this is that we get something smaller in cash. And it's just, that just is no longer an issue. Your quality of life uh, as a result of this decision, I would just have to believe is, is really good. Is that, is that, how does that feel when you run that through your head? Uh, it, it feels good to me. All right. Feels great. And here's the other thing you could do. If you sell this place and you rent, maybe you sock enough money away that in five years, you guys go buy a condo that becomes the thing she's going to live in completely oh, debt free. That's a good idea too. So I like the plan of going, hey, how can we limit her expenses long term to where she has a paid for condo, very little, you know, she'll pay an HOA fee, but she won't have to mess with things. Things will be covered. It's an easier life. And I think that's the thing you start aiming for is what does that that next chapter for her look like, whether it's five years from now or 20 years from now. I agree. And yeah. maxing out your retirement plans is going to be a great thing for you guys to do. How old are you, James? I'm um, 60. 60. Okay. So you have the opportunity to do catch-up contributions with retirement plans and making 190, you guys can put a whole lot of money away, especially if you got rid of the mortgage by uh, renting for a season. Yeah. Yeah, if we got that, for sure. I, I can't imagine being in your shoes, James. So yeah. we're we're thinking of you and pulling for you and uh, hope hope things go way better than even you plan. Yeah. Thank you, James, for the call. Let's go to Cameron now in Tampa, Florida. Cameron, how can we help? Hi. Um, so I'm just wondering if um, I should be looking to buy a house soon. Um, I'm pretty young. I got a, a pretty good job after graduating college here. I have a decent amount of money saved up. I do have some debt, um, but I'm just wondering uh, – if I should be looking to buy a house soon, or if I should just keep renting and waiting. What makes you think, hey, this is the time to buy a house? Uh, mostly because I feel like I'm throwing my money away and renting when I could be, you know, be putting it towards a house instead. And who threw that myth at you? Uh, maybe just some friends, some family members, I guess. Um, mainly, I, you know, I'm just kind of tired of seeing my money go in the trash can when I'm paying rent. But I feel well, like it could be going towards. I have a different potential. viewpoint. I don't see renting as throwing okay. away money yeah. uh, because I know okay. as I've been a homeowner a long time and I rented a long time yeah. and renting yeah. buys you patience. There's so many benefits options, of renting. Options, options, flexibility, options. freedom. Yeah. No maintenance and right. repairs to deal with. It's yeah. someone else's problem, that's true. and that's yep. what you're paying for with yep. rent. That's right. You're you're transferring the risk to someone else while you buy yourself patience and build a financial foundation. So how much debt do you have? I have thirty one thousand dollars in debt and it's a car loan. Ooh. Ooh. What's your income? Um, I make one fifteen base, uh, but I get about twenty to thirty grand in bonuses. Um, so about one forty. Amazing. Nice. Yeah, you okay. Went, you went and got yourself a, a matchbox car. Nice car. What are you driving? I it's an Audi S five. There oh, it is. I, yeah, I knew it. How much do you have in savings? It, it's uh, so I have sixty grand um, in a high yield savings account that gets about five percent annual interest, and I have ten grand in my checking, and I have about seventeen grand in my four hundred one k. Bro, you got money. Why are you carrying a car payment? <laughs> yeah, here's that's what I would do, Cameron. Is that speaking if, if of earning money and throwing money in the calling. trash, that's what you're doing yeah. with the Audi. Yeah, you're probably close to underwater on this thing. So here's what I would do: if you want to keep the car, pay it off today and use the other 29000 remaining, that becomes your fully funded emergency fund. Then and only then do you begin saving up a down payment from scratch. And you'll be able to do that fast with no car payment, making 140 And once you have a good down payment, 5 to 20%, 25% of your take-home pay, a 15-year fixed, that's when you know you're ready. Not when people tell you that it's time because you're throwing away money on rent. I rebuke that. Ha! <laughs> The Reverend George Camel has spoken. It's time to take an offering. We call it a commercial break. We'll be right back. This is The Ramsey Show.
Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell joins me. And we are so excited that you are with us. 888-825-5225. 888-825-5225. So from George next to me to George in Phoenix, Arizona. George, how can George and I help? Thanks for taking my call. My, car, my call is regarding credit cards. Uh, I have just recently deleted all my credit cards uh, wow. from my life. So are you saying you However, cut them up or did you close the accounts? Closed them out. Deleted them. Uh, Deleted them. That's They're strong. Gone. I love it, George. Wow. Uh, you, I, I called a while back and George and, and Rachel was on with you that day and you're both very helpful to me. Good. My question... My question is, what do you do to pay for, for example, a plane reservation or a car rental or to buy something on Amazon? I've used my debit card a time or two, but it scares me to use a debit card because they have unlimited access to your account, where with a credit card, you can call and dispute it. Sure. Uh, and I'm real concerned about ID theft. Absolutely. Well, there's there's a bunch of things you can do, George, that'll help you sleep better at night. One, you can get in touch with uh, our friends at Xander. They have a great ID theft protection program. Every single team member at Ramsey has it, and that really helps you stay protected. Uh, number two, I want to encourage you that debit cards, if, does your card have a Visa or MasterCard logo on it, that debit card? Yeah, yes. They have a zero it liability does. policy. You can look it up. Uh, that covers you as well. On top of that, there's something called the Electronic Fund Transfer Act that covers debit cards from fraud as well. And so just oh, that on the, on the that. legal side, there's a lot of peace about that. Now, I get it. It's your money on the hook versus you know the credit card companies. The bank commonly will issue a provisional credit while they investigate. So they'll put money back into your account. They'll look into it. A week or two later, the money's back and all is well. And it's, it's more rare yeah, than it, it, everyone has a fear that it's going to constantly happen to them. I can count on one yeah. hand with one finger how many times it's happened in my 11 years of just using debit cards. And I'll even give you an extra gotcha. tool, George, that will that's so helpful. And this is not a company that we have a partnership with, but it's a great tool called privacy.com. And what it does, it creates virtual debit card numbers that's tied to your bank account. But if someone steals that number, it doesn't matter. It's a virtual card that you can just go delete on the website. What? How is it that I know about this? We don't hang out enough, Ken. Well, so okay. that's Stacey's a great tool. Be very happy. So, George, when I'm booking a, a yeah. plane reservation or I'm using Amazon, number one, I don't tie my debit card to it. You know when it says save my card info for later? Don't do that. That's okay. that's one way to avoid it. And number two, use a, a program like privacy.com to create a virtual debit card. I'm for writing that down. Amazon, you can create another one for Southwest, create another one for this or that. And you can set spending limits, time limits. You can make it a one-time use card so that once you make that transaction, it disappears forever. No one will ever have access this to it. This is great for teenagers. It's fantastic. What is your what is your thought on a secured credit card? My credit union has offered that, and they've also offered, a, I think they call it a prepaid credit card. I don't see the benefit uh, of that if you're going to use your own money anyways, other than the bank yeah. trying to get more data from you and selling you on more debt products and telling you, well, you yeah. might as well get this card with the rewards, George. You're doing such a great job. Yeah. Might as well. And I find that it's a it's a very it's a trap. sneaky trap. And uh, using a debit card has just changed the way I see money, I handle money. And I think if you use those steps I laid out for you, you're going to make purchases with a lot of confidence. Well, that puts my my mind much more at ease using my debit card. I appreciate your help today, guys. If I can help one George out there, I've done the Lord's work, Ken. <laughs> I love a George. You know, who doesn't love a George? It started for me with the uh, little curious George, the monkey. That's the one you thought of? It was the very first George in my life is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. I thought Washington. You No. Learned, okay. You don't learn about George Washington until, like, First grade? Yeah. Maybe? I, I thought you'd go Foreman, Costanza, Lopez. I mean, there's a lot of good Georges out These there. These guys are all Georges that hit me later in life. You're not listening to me. I feel like we don't talk anymore. I said the first George. Do, do you not listen to me? I apologize. All right. I, I don't feel heard. I don't. I, uh, th thank you. The studio yeah, audience this, is this totally tracking This call is about me. George and, and his credit card issues. Don't right. make this about Somehow you. I've made it about me. I don't know how. The Boy. audience is not surprised. <laughs> Tell you that much. <laughs> but they're laughing. It's an average Friday. They're having. <laughs> Let's go to Lauren. <laughs> Nicely done. You turned that completely on me. That That's was what I do. Beautiful. Lauren is joining us in St. Louis. Lauren, how can we help? 
Hi, Ken. Hi, George. First of all, I think I'm on Team Curious George as my first George. <laughs> hey! As are millions yeah. and millions of other people. Thank you, Lauren, for listening to me. Uh, yeah. Now we're listening to you. George, are you listening to Lauren? Yes, Ken is the all man right. in, the, in the yellow hat. The, sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Well, here's my situation. So I'm 23 years old. I have zero debt, zero student loans. I have $40,000 saved between cold, hard cash and stocks and $47,000 saved between my Roth IRA and my 401k. Wow. Way to go, Lauren. (laughs) Amazing. Thank you. So um, my salary is base plus commission. I hit about 60, 2023. I'm expected to be around 70 to 70, 70, 25. Go, girl. Excuse me. Lauren. 70 to 75K. Just (sighs) for um, this year. Good for you. And. Um, my question is, I'm expecting to be engaged at the end of this year. So a lady, little birdie, you know, put that in my ear. Okay. Oh, uh, is this birdie credible? This birdie is very credible. Oh. <laughs> okay. I hope, by the way, I hope, surprised. I hope he's not listening right now. <laughs> so my question is, do I stay at home for another year, keep saving, or do I go ahead and purchase a home by myself now? Because I don't want to move in with my boyfriend until we're engaged. I'm a little old-fashioned. So well, I want to know if I should spend another year saving at home or if I can go ahead and purchase that home um, by myself. Oof. I got feelings. Ken has met. You want to hit? You want to be dad Ken for a moment? Yeah. Uh, I'll be. I'll be. I'm old enough to be your dad, unfortunately. Uh, okay. I would tell you that you're not as old fashioned as you think you are, and I would not move in with him when you're engaged. I just am not a fan of that. There's so much that could go wrong. It's an unnecessary move. That's my little two cents on that. George? I would, yes, I would move in once you guys are married, yeah. and then you combine finances, and there it makes this whole process yeah. way smoother uh, yeah. relationally, emotionally, and financially. Yeah. And oh, don't buy a house yet. Yes. You all buy the house together. I want. I think it's real. It's a special thing, and do do that together. And even then, you may want to rent for a year. I like before that. Before you, you got to figure out like, yes. what it's like to live with someone. Good heavens! It's the first year of marriage is dreadfully hard. I'm just going to tell you while I'm giving life advice, the lobby's loving this. Home ownership adds a level of stress to newlyweds Why that is add unnecessary. That? So you got two people, Lauren, that have grown up in two different ways, and you're trying to figure out how to mend that together. And I, buying a house and all that, just rent for a year, maybe two, figure out where we want to live, where we want to do life. Yeah. And the more money you have saved up, the the more, the better position you'll be in when you do purchase a house. Now, is he as financially astute as you? I hope. Yes, very much so. Oh. He has he's no debt, money in the bank? CPA. Yeah, he's doing very well. Because he has no debt, student athlete, zero debt. He's got maybe 15 grand socked away right now. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, if you know this engagement's on the horizon followed by the wedding, I would just stay home. Me too. If you've got a great situation, just stay home until you you move into an apartment together that you guys rent once you're married. Give Mm -hmm. that a six-month lease to a year lease. Yep. And as you do the home shopping. And by then, you guys might have $200,000 saved. I see that. I see that. And what if you could put 50% down or 70% down and pay off a mortgage early? Mm. Now you guys are newlyweds with a six-figure income with no payments in the world. Double income, no kids. Think about that. I like that. We're talking about wealth building, George. And that's, that's Lauren, that's something me and my wife did. We lived out exactly what I just told you, and it's one of the main factors yep. that caused us to become net worth millionaires in our early 30s. Yep. Stacy and I did the exact same thing. We were married three years before we bought a home. And, and even uh, then, by a reasonable, modest home. Yeah, oh, it was modest. Of course, I thought we were going to die. Really? I, Oh, yeah. It was a $195,000 house, and I thought oh. I had just... And of course, I, we were following Dave's stuff, but I just remember going... <laughs> people have that in student loan debt now, as they call the show. Th- that's normal people. Yeah. I, you look at me, I'm abnormal. I mean, we know this. Uh, and But it was worth the wait. It really was. So thanks Hope for that the call. that helps, Lauren. Appreciate yeah, it. Absolutely. All right, uh, George. Uh, unbelievably, it feels another hour has passed. Time flies by when you're having fun with Ken Coleman. And it's the truth. He is George Campbell. I'm Ken Coleman. You're listening to The Ramsey Show.
live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions. This is The Ramsey Show. It's where we help you win in your life, with your money, with your work, and with your relationships. The phone number to jump in, because it is your show, 888-825-5225. 888-825-5225. I'm Ken Coleman. George Camel joins me. And we're going to be here together with you this hour. Let's go to Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, George's old stomping ground. Let's see if a little Bostonian accent makes Come its on, way Chris. into the advice. Chris, how can we help? Great. How are you, Ken and George? Uh, we're having a blast. I just heard it. I heard it in the way you said George. That's, that's beautiful. I love the Boston accent. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. A little yeah, bit. I think. So what's going on? <laughs> so I have a, I have a question. Um, I am currently a, my wife and I are net worth millionaires. Um, I'm 45. She is 32. Um, I'm struggling a little bit on kind of what's underneath that and the the approach that I should take. So we have um, a a house um, and we also have a second investment property. On top of that, some student loans and a car loan. just kind of curious, um, you know, essentially we're in baby step two and we do have an emergency fund of a little bit more than a thousand dollars. I'm struggling with the emergency fund of a thousand dollars. If something major goes wrong and we need to repair the house, a furnace goes or a roof needs to be replaced or, you know, something like that where, you know, we, we are net worth millionaires. So I'm just kind of looking for advice on the next next step to take and whether or not I should sell my investment property potentially and get rid of all of the other debt underneath and just have my mortgage left. Um, so I'm just kind of looking for some advice. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're on the plan. I and mean, congratulations on being net worth millionaires at such a young age. That's an, that's an accomplishment. So tell me Thank about you. these debts. How much do you have in student loans? So student loans, uh, between the two of us, we have about 37000 And the car loans? 35000 just one car loan. My wife has a car, but it's it's um, it's paid off. Okay. And your primary mortgage? The primary mortgage um, is $214,000. Um, we do have a secondary of about 42000 on the mortgage. The property is worth about five fifty currently. Okay. The secondary, is that like a, like a HELOC or a home equity loan? It is. It okay. is, and, and that, that's actually that, – that's one of the main reasons why I'm looking to sell the investment property because the HELOC rates are just not favorable oh, yeah. at all right now. And I mean, I'm guessing yours is variable, zero, right? It is. It is. Yeah. It is. And then your rental mortgage, what's left on that? Uh, 40000 And that's okay. worth about 230 Okay. So let's play this out. You sell the rental. You would net how much? Like 160 or something? After after taxes, um, I would net approximately like 160, 160 to 170 after I pay taxes and, and the realtor fees. Okay. And then from smallest to largest debt, we would pay off the car loan and the student loans, right? That I would pay off the car loan, student loans, the condo, and the second mortgage and have everything gone. Yes. So that would leave you with... Let's say forty six grand in savings, and that let's call that in your emergency fund. Mm-hmm. And I would add up what all those payments add up to between the student loans, the car loans, the rental, the second mortgage. Are we talking two grand, three grand a month that you'd have back in your life? So if I, yeah, so be, no, no, not quite. Um, so between what I pay for payments now and what I would save, I'm looking at an extra like five or six hundred dollars a month. Um, in payments. What's your rental mortgage every oh, month? Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at it differently. So I'm looking at about two grand in payments. The difference between the two, it's about two grand in payments. Okay. So you just got a sizable raise with 2000 extra dollars a month mm-hmm. back in your life. And for that reason, I'm doing this. Yeah. And if you want to get back into real estate investing later on in life, it's totally fine. We, we love real estate, but I would do it with cash and that's going to be a slower process, but it's also going to be a more peaceful process. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm done with with the real estate world. I think, you know, at my age, I went through some health issues, um, was out of work for about four and a half years, and I'm I'm back to work now. Um, but I'm looking to eventually get into something that I that I love. Um, I've actually been contemplating, um, you know, financial planning and being a financial coach. Um, I've actually talked to Brad a few different times. 
And um, so I'm looking to even potentially, you know, downsize my job, so to speak. And to do what do you want to do. I love as a, I'd love exactly, to help. As opposed yeah, to, that's awesome. Yeah. What's, what's your current household income? I'm curious. Uh, it's about two and, a, two and a quarter. Wow. What do you make of that? Uh, about 140. Okay. So what do you think? What do you think the options are beyond financial coaching? Because that's a that's a start from scratch. That's a hang a shingle. That's like really gutting it out. That takes time to build. Are there other things in the finance world that you're intrigued by? Yeah, I mean, I could I could always be a you know there are a lot of companies that look for um, maybe like part time controller or um, you know even even bookkeeping something a little bit more simple. You know, if I Good. If we downsize and all we have is this one mortgage left, you know, oh, the, love that. the funds don't need to be as great. And we have about 650000 in retirement savings as well. Good. Wonderful. Um, well, I would so look at... You know, we're, we're on track there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a couple of things. I'm going to give you my Get Clear career assessment. It's a wonderful little tool. It's not a personality assessment. It's not at all. It's nothing to do with personality. It's really about how you're wired. And I want you to take that. It's my gift to you. And I think it's going to really help you with some more clarity and maybe just a whole lot of confirmation and confidence. So I'm going to give you that. And then I want to give you the book, The Proximity Principle. It's the number one bestseller. And it's all about the right people in the right places to help you make that transition when you're ready to make it. And and it works. The Proximity Principle works on the front end in that before I confirm that I want to pivot to something different, I want to hang out with people that are in that world. So maybe a maybe a, an accountant, maybe a CPA, maybe a bookkeeper, maybe a financial coach. Spending time over coffee or a meal with all those people allows you to kind of do a high school level term paper on the good, the bad, and the ugly about these things. And it allows your heart to go ding, 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 or the eh. And, and I want you to have those two gifts um, because I want you to have a smooth um, transition because financially – with George's advice, you guys are boy. You're just gonna have a lot of peace and a whole lot of opportunity to build. I agree. I agree. Awesome, love it. Well, hang on the line. It's exciting, and we'll get you both of those to get clear assessment and the proximity principle. I love the heart of this because we're yeah. now going. We're getting out of debt so that so we that. have career options. We can do the thing to, we've always to dreamed. Do of. the thing he wants to do. And, and most know, people they don't have the margin to do don't. that. And and point something else out. He has this this insight because of a health issue mm. that thankfully he he got through, and four years of not working because of health, George. I just want to point out to our audience, when you hear me talk, because you know I'm not the money personality. You're like, oh, why is that guy on the show? You know, whatever. Maybe you say that. No maybe one you thinks don't. that. Here's what I'm saying: four years without doing work will get a person to a place of tremendous clarity on doing something that matters. If you ever talk to somebody who hasn't worked, and I'm not talking in retirement, I'm saying they just, there was a stoppage of work. There's something about the soul, George, that craves to make a contribution. And I love how it led him to this point. And because of this financial opportunity and financial peace and the baby steps, he's going to be able to pursue it. That's how it all ties together. Full circle. Yeah, really good stuff. Thank you for the call, Chris. All right, George, take us out in the Bostonian accent, please. Wicked sick show, dude. We'll be right back. To the Ramsey Show, I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell joins me. The phone number for you to jump in is 888-825-5225. So George and I always enjoy uh, being together, love being together on the show. We really do. We have a lot of fun. Hope you can tell. We call it camaraderie. Is that what we call it? You know how to spell camaraderie? The question I've got is after the C-O-M-R-A. Oh, you already lost me, Ken. C-A-M-A. Camaraderies with a C A, not a C O. C A M A R A. Wow, I got to tell you, it gets wild. I uh, I'm dealing with the reality that I'm not hooked on phonics. I thought I was, and this moment has revealed that I'm not. But anyway, uh, one of the things we were talking about during the commercial break is how much we enjoy when we have the live studio audience. Great crowd today. They've been so great, and we love live events. We were just because talking about how we miss doing we miss all the we live miss events. doing all the live events, and so we've got a big one coming. In fact, it's a brand new one. 
And uh, you may have heard us talk about it. If you haven't, George, what are we calling it? Total Money Makeover Weekend. May 10 and 11, right here on the Ramsey campus in our sparkling, spanking brand new, uh, what do we call it? The Ramsey Event Center. Yeah. And, state uh, of the art. State of the art. And uh, this is a one weekend crash course on everything we teach about money. Now, listen, we're all talking money. So if you come and go, all right, I'm, I'm waiting for Ken to give me a little career direction. Well, we're going to sort of, but it's money, money, money. In a roundabout money. way. I'm going to be talking about how to become rich. Wow. Yeah. I I might be in attendance for and your And some talk. of you are going, yeah, we know, Ken, it's the baby steps. Uh, it's not so fast, Padawan. It's not, that's right. So that's all I'm going to reveal. It's actually a little bit more than that. And uh, we're also going to be doing a live taping of your wildly successful runaway uh, podcast with Rachel Cruz called Smart Money Happy Hour. And uh, I'm going to be on, I'm going to see if my busy schedule will allow me to show up and sit in the crowd and have a sip. To be fair, we can't Can stop I you. Can I have a cocktail as well? We can't stop you from storming the stage. I'm not going to do that. It's not that exciting. If you rush the stage, you're on stage with us. Uh, so anyway, it's going to be great, great, great. A lot of fun. Uh, all the Ramsey personalities, including Dave as well. Don't wait to get your tickets. Our Platinum Plus tickets have already sold out. So, uh, uh-oh, some of you waited too long for all that Platinum Plusage. That's There's a lot going on there. I don't even know what that means. But, it's the whole uh, kit and caboodle. Well, they're going to be having a time at Dave's Barn. There's a special private event there. Oh, but here's some good news. You can still get, according to this lovely piece of paper in front of me, you can still get platinum or VIP tickets. Yes. So go to RamseySolutions.com slash events. What are you doing? Can you tease your talk at all? I can. It involves multiple microphones. That's about all I can tease legally right now. So during your talk... There's going to be, that's all you'll tell me is that there's going to be multiple micro. I'm very excited. It's a different Any chance talk. you'll juggle those? No, not physically. Okay. But mentally, yes. Did you just give us a clue? Yes. Unintentionally? I won't be physically juggling. If that's a clue, I hope that helps. Well, you said not, I said, will you be juggling? And then you said not physically. So now I'm, you see what's happening at home, folks? Ken's doing some don't. mental juggling right now. Uh, boy, I tell you what. Let's go to Vicky so that we're not juggling, we're helping. Vicky's joining us in Salt Lake City. Vicky, how can we help? Hey, um, I just was wondering if you guys might have some um, ideas or solutions as to how we can get out of our uh, debt pothole that we've got into. I think we have a few. How big of a pothole oh. is this? Um, well, from what I'm seeing with our credit cards and our HELOC loan is about, now it's about 109000 Whew. What's, what's on the credit cards? How much, what's the balances total? Um, 30000 And the HELOC is another eighty. Yeah, pretty close. Wow. And that's all of the debt outside of your mortgage? Yes, okay. um, I think we owe like three hundred and forty on the house. What's your household income? Um, I think it's a hundred and thirty. Okay. So, what caused you guys to go one hundred and ten thousand dollars into debt between the credit cards and HELOC? Well, um, my husband bought the house before we were married and decided he was going to try to flip it. Ooh, and, I don't like the word try to flip it in there. That scares me. <laughs> well, um, it's been two years now, and we're still living in an unfinished house. Oh, Ooh. boy. It's like a and, TV show on one of those channels about fix my flip or something. Flip or flop, one of those? No, it's like fix my flip, I think. Yeah, it's, I think it's a flop right now. Oh, but. yeah. All right. So what was the 110 spent on? So... Um, obviously we both have, um, kind of like a, a spending problem as well, aside from yeah. deciding to flip the house. So tell me what kind um, of things are out of control on the spending side. Well, um, I don't know how, where I would even begin to spend a hundred thousand dollars on just stuff. Yeah, was it just stuff? Accumulated over Furniture, a couple years. lifestyle, going out, massages. What was it? Cause I think there's, I want to get to the root of the. A spending addiction beneath it all um it's, it's kind of a lifestyle thing um he's into like hunting and all that kind of stuff we all know that that stuff isn't cheap and i like the the girly girl things um 
and I I did figure out a way that I can still get my nails done and and not have to actually pay cash for it. How, how's that um, work? I, I got to know work. more on that one because I'd like to tell my wife. <laughs> Um, trade work. I, I do sewing off to the side. And so I, I, I make clothes and stuff like that for my nail artist and, um, she does my nails. In okay. Return. It's a barter situation. So it's a haggle. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're not going to be able to haggle our way out of $110,000 in debt. So <laughs> no. here, here's the no. deal. Your lifestyle is about to be cut down to nothing. Oof. Yeah, I see it going that way. Oof. So no more gear. In fact, we're going to be selling everything in sight that's not tied down on Facebook Marketplace. Mm. And I think we're going to be doing our own nails. I was going to say that. She's got to paint her own nails. Now all this knitting's <laughs> got to go to selling stuff. So making Oof. 130, how much margin do you guys have outside of all these payments? The minimum payments on your mortgage, the HELOC, the credit cards. How much extra could you throw at these debts every month? Well, um, some good things happened in the last week. Um, we did get our um, tax return, which was uh, 5000 and we put all of that into the credit cards, and we did actually pay off, um, I think, two credit cards. Good. Are you cutting them up, closing the accounts? Yeah. Neither of us even carry the cards on us at all. Good. Like, we don't have access to them. So here's the key. You're going to make a budget every month. You guys are going to sit down. You're going to agree to it. You're going to stick to it. You're going to track all the transactions. And you're, both of your goal is to go, how much margin do we have at the end of each month to throw at the debt? And your goal is to increase that amount every single month. and Make okay. it a game. And go, all right, we were able to throw 2000 extra on the credit cards this month. Let's try to aim for 2100 next month. And let's see what we need to move around in the budget to get there. Okay. And that means meal planning hanging at home. We're not going to hunt. We're going to use anything we have at the house. We're not spending any extra money beyond food, utility, shelter, transportation, insurance bills. That's it. The basics. Okay. And making 130, you guys can get out of this in a few years. You know, if you're, think about it, if you're able to put, let's say 35 grand a year at the debt, well, guess what? It's gone in about three years. So now you do the math on yeah. that and you go, all right, that's 2,900 bucks a month. We got to throw at this debt. You guys get that amount in your paychecks every month, right? Yeah, I, I, that sounds doable for sure. And so I, I want you to set the goal that scares you just a little bit. If it feels like you're going to be able to hit it easily, you haven't set a big enough goal. There needs to, you okay. have to feel the sacrifice where you go, oh, we're really going to have to cut back to get three grand to throw at the debt this month, but we're going to do it. And it, I promise you, it will, it will actually create a better marriage. You guys are going to communicate like you never have before. Uh, yeah, I hope so. So hang on the line. I'm going to gift you guys Financial Peace University. Watch all nine lessons together. And I'm going to gift you the Every Dollar Premium Budget. It'll connect to your bank account. You can track the transactions. You're about to experience some serious life change. And I can't wait for you to call back and let us know how it's going. Yeah. Yeah. Especially this do-it-yourself nails. Mm. Now, you did say no more hunting, but uh, now that he's bought this stuff, well, he needs to bring home some meat. Ammo is not cheap. But yeah, yeah, but the savings on the venison and all those things, I mean, you fill up a freezer full of all that good Send stuff. Send Ken some deer jerky. How is it that you aren't hunting now that you're debt-free? This is, you love to save money. No desire. I, I'm an indoor cat, Ken. <laughs> I'm all good. We'll settle it on the break. To the Ramsey Show. This is where you come for advice on your money, your work, and your relationships. And we're so thrilled you're here. I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell joins me. The phone number is 888-825-5225. All right, let's go to Christy in Fargo, North Car uh, excuse me, North Dakota. I don't know why, why I went Carolina, but it is North Dakota. Christy, how can we help? Well, I have a question about paying for my son's college. Okay. Um, so here's the deal. He's, my son is gifted. 
I never saved for his college because I always knew he'd probably get a full ride somewhere, which he has been offered um, multiple of those. However, he applied at MIT where he wants to go for a math degree, and he actually got accepted. Whoa, congrats, <laughs> so, Mom. It's awesome. I know. So very proud. Um, his father, neither one of us are college graduates, so of course we want to give him every opportunity. But um, MIT, maybe you're aware, they just they don't accept outside scholarships. They basically go by your income, and then they grant you the difference. Okay. So. So I'm looking at paying about 28000 a year out of pocket for him to go. Um, he, I don't want to do loans, like I realize, but I guess my question is, is it going to be worth, or do, does, do you think it's worth it for me to do that? Well, I know Dave always said you don't need a pedigree, you just need a degree. <laughs> right. But it's like a once-in-a-lifetime kind of opportunity. Let's flip the question. Can we flip it? Yep. Okay. Yep. So instead of uh, of should I do it, the question is, can you do it? And so, well, I think so. Well, no, not think so. Do we know <laughs> that you can? So twenty eight thousand uh, a year, right? Correct. That's what you would be responsible for. So that's a little bit over two grand a month, right? Correct. Can you do that in your existing budget with your existing income and everything else you got to take care of? With a lot of cutbacks, yes. Okay, when we say a lot of cutbacks, are we barely making it by? Is it paycheck to paycheck? No. <laughs> we just spend a lot on probably foolish things that we just want and don't need. How much could he a- earn during a summer job? Maybe a spring break here and there. Uh, so let's just take the number 28000 How much do you think he could make uh, that could contribute to that? Well, actually, um, he's done that the past three years, and he's saved. So he makes about twelve to fifteen thousand dollars a year at his job. Now, when he's in college, he won't be able to work. So he does have some savings. Well, so he would pay, use that. So course. how much? So let's start playing this out. So of the twenty-eight thousand, by the time that bill is due, how yeah. much do we have? How much can he contribute each year? Well. I mean, this year he could cover he could cover almost all of it. He has twenty four thousand. Right. So first year would be okay, but I'm just worried about the following years. I mean, because he obviously won't be able to work as much while he's in school. Again, I'm going to give it to the budget expert to my right. So by year two, when that bill comes due, are you can you guys mm-hmm. cover the twenty eight grand that year? I feel like we can. Yes. Okay, and then year yes. three, can you save up another twenty eight in a year to cover year three? Yeah, I think so. Yes, <laughs> I know so. I'm gonna... that, this is where the budget comes into play because it's it's yeah. very mm-hmm. simple math, Christy. You take twenty eight thousand dollars. We're going to divide it by twelve. Mm-hmm. That's twenty three thirty three every single month. We need to save now with a high yield savings mm-hmm. account. It's actually a little bit less. If we're on a short right. term, you may want to just do it in a high yield savings. And so now it becomes all right. We got to save twenty three hundred bucks a month. Can we find that room in the budget? If we cut back on X, Y, Z, maybe it's he's going to work part time on the weekends. You guys are going to take on a side job for a little while until we know that the rest is covered. So bingo. Well, right. And he does plan to tutor at MIT. That's already been discussed. Great. If he if he goes, he can do that. But Christy, there, so I think Christy, let me just talk to you parent to parent because I got an 18 yep. year old going off to school in the fall and I'm doing the same deal. And let me just tell you yep. this. If I was in your situation. And I really wanted to do this. My first thought would be, all right, we need to do a budget. And we've determined, you just told me and George, that you could cover it. You could cover the twenty three thirty three every month out of your monthly income. You'd have to yep. cut back on some stuff. But you know what I'd do? I'd go, you know what? That's not good enough. I'm going to go make some side money or my husband's going to pick up a couple of jobs and we're going to make it to where we're not cutting back that much and we're able to bless our son. Where there is a will, there is a way. And I'm saying this is close enough to where you guys can go, there's no reason for us to cut back and suffer. Let's go hustle a little bit and let's make Junior, and you are, pay a good chunk of it. And so we've only got yep. to come up with three years or two years or whatever it is. I, I just I think this is extremely doable, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you it's doable. And you just got to decide okay. how you are going to do it. We haven't even talked about him still applying so, for other scholarships and grants and awards. Right. If he's that Correct. sharp. Well, and MIT only lets you use 5,600 of outside scholarships. So he has gotten more than that, but that's all they will apply. That's the student portion. All right. Does that play portion. into the 28? 
No, because they don't. They don't. Will not apply that to the parent expected contribution. They what if just, it's an award so paid directly to you rather than the school? Because that do, that doesn't get subtracted from your aid. I'm sorry. What was the question? If it's an award that is paid directly to you rather than the school, that won't get subtracted. Uh, most of from them aid. are payable to the school. But there are a lot out there that are just classified as awards that get paid directly to you. And so I would focus his okay. efforts on that. Kid is so smart. So I got a quick question. Where's that 5600 that he's earned? Where's that going? Well, he'll so he'll pay that that portion. That's the 5600 is what MIT expects the student to pay. But I'm saying is that coming off of the 28? That'll come off of No, it doesn't come off the 28. The 28 is on top of that. Okay, so our that's... family contribution is like thirty three hundred, whatever, or okay. thirty three thousand. I got that's what I was trying to get at. So I still my yeah. I still hold my position that you guys can do this, but why have to scrimp? Just go make a little extra money, do whatever it takes. Cut, yes. Sure. He needs so to be the writing other thing essays. Is, is our income is a little variable. My husband works for the railroad, so it's when they call him for a train, then he goes, and when there's no trains, he doesn't go. So well, guess I what he's doing? A side gig. Well, hold on a second. What I, I know what he's doing when the train hadn't called. He's somewhere else. He needs to find yeah, himself know. some some labor work where when he's not on the train, he's working. Yeah, but he has to be available on the phone to get on the train within 90 minutes. So right. Kind of so he deal. goes and works for a guy that goes, here's the deal, man. I'm working for you. I'm busting it. If the choo-choo mm -hmm. calls, I'm out. Yep. The other thing yeah, to exactly. realize, Christy, is that this is not fatal. If he doesn't no. go to MIT and he gets well, a full that's... ride to another great school, yeah. the kid's brilliant. He's going to be okay right. in life. He'll do great wherever oh, yeah. he goes. You know right. what? And by the way, you save $120,000 that yeah. he can now use toward that's buying a house. And so I'm truly not – I don't think the – MIT is truly – I'm from Boston. It's one of the greatest institutions out there, and it does hold some weight out there with employers. He yeah, might he's get an amazing do, right. job. Why can't he work in the summer again? Oh, he will work in the summer when he's home. But I'm just saying, currently, when he was making fifteen thousand a year, he was working year round. Yeah, but 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 if he's as smart, first of all, I can't even compute what the brain must be like to get an MIT. Like that whole part of my brain is dark. There's no brain waves Trust at me, all. I'm with you. Yeah, he they're gonna me study me when I die. They'll study me and go, "This dude literally had no functional ability in science and math at all." It's really extraordinary. Um, but but my point is, is if he's that smart. He could be tutoring online, tutoring there. He could be making more money. So it's, it's hey, sure. Junior, uh, you want to go to MIT? Awesome. You're that smart. Math is easy for you. Go make some more money. Okay. And you help out some too, but I would say yes. I would commit. But the husband – but again, I'm telling you what. We, we always tell you what we would do. If I were your husband in that train job, I would have something on the side where I could be making money. And if the train calls, fine. But you know, mm -hmm. let's 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 take control of this and not feel like we're being controlled. That's what I'm getting. Sure. Okay. okay. By the yeah, way, congratulations! Sure. You birthed an MIT level student. This this deserves to be honored, doesn't Very it, George? Very impressive. Yeah, that's like my husband and I always say, too stupid to make us smart. <laughs> no, not <laughs> true. Negatives make a positive. No He's way. Not, not true. Not true. Unfortunately, I uh, did not pass along any any math skills to my daughter either. So. They'll be all right. All right, George. Uh, we did this early in the hour. I feel like we're MIT. Give me a uh, give me a Bostonian oh, MIT gosh. level out. Take us out to break, George. Bro, you got any algebra? Come on, dude. Give me a freaking equation real quick. There it is, folks. George Campbell. Boston Zone. To the Ramsey Show. I'm Kid Colvin. George Campbell joins me. It's time for our scripture of the day from Proverbs 14:25. A truthful witness saves lives, but one who breathes out lies is deceitful. Our quote of the day from Mark Twain: A lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is putting on its shoes. Love that. 
Oh, big theme. And that on, was before social media. Big theme on honesty today. I'm not sure uh, what's going on with the team there, but we're, we're driving some honesty. Is that a dig, there. guys? What's going on in the booth? Uh, Austin is feeling a little virtuous today. Okay. And a great shirt, I might add, by the way. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Hawaiian look shirt at that, Fridays. Look at that guy's shirt, would you please? Fantastic. Don't look at it too closely. It's jarring. <laughs> It's very bright. <laughs> All right. Denise is up in Carson City, Nevada. Denise, how can Hello. we? Hello. How are you? Hey, good. How are you guys? Well, we're having a lot of fun. How can we help? Well, um, I recently got married in September, and um, we've been doing the baby steps since January. And since January, we paid off the Home Depot card, Woo. which was almost too great. The tonal, which was a thousand bucks, my car, which was six thousand, and we're almost complete with my credit card, which was three thousand dollars. We owe seven hundred. Wow. My question is now: um, I owe for a Peloton rower, which is no interest for three years, and the balance is thirty two hundred, and my house oh. is fifty three thousand. Um, since there's no interest on the Peloton rower, should I just work on the house for the next three years and get that down? I and not ask. pay the rower. How long have you had the, the Peloton rower? Oh, I just got it in November. Duh. All right. All right. How often are you using it? I got to ask. Every day. I oh, Really? You like the rowing, huh? Yeah. I, well, I, I, that's what I do is I work out a, nice. obsessively probably too much. But um, I have all the equipment, so my gym is pretty nice. So that's nice. what I like to spend my money on. All right. All right, wow. George. So it's, what say you, sir? <laughs> well... Denise, here's the thing. When we look at debt and we look at payments, we here at Ramsey, we don't look at interest rate. We look at solving for freedom. And we see payments and debt as a thief, regardless of the interest rate being 0% or 40%. And instead, we focus on psychology because we know that personal finance is 80% behavior. It's only 20% head knowledge. And so the debt snowball is when you list the smallest debt, Next, next smallest debt, next smallest debt. And that would mean your Peloton is up next on the pecking order. And that's because you're going to pay that off pretty quickly. How much do you make? Um, well, my husband um, makes about probably 40000 tax-free. He's a, a combat veteran, disabled. And I make probably about 70000 a year. Okay. So you guys are making six figures. And you have no debt except the Peloton as far as consumer debt? Oh, um. Well, a credit card that's $700, which we're going to pay off in like probably a couple Today. days. Do you have the money in the bank right now? To pay the roller off? No. To pay the credit card off? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd pay it off today and never look back and just cut it up. Okay. Because part of the problem here is we're is you're living a life where you're now okay with payments, whether it's the Peloton at 0%, credit card minimum. And I just want you to be comfortable where you go, we don't need payments. What if we just had our amazing six-figure income at our disposal and gave none of it away to lenders? Right. And instead built up you're, – you're great at, at building muscle. Work on building a savings muscle. I where see you what go, you did there. If we put 300 bucks away for 10 months, we could just pay for a Peloton with cash. Right. Or even better, you go, I'm going to find one on Facebook Marketplace that the last person thought they'd use, and I'm going to buy it at a deep discount. And so those mm -hmm. kinds of that, – that mentality helps you make wiser spending decisions and helps you build wealth faster. So if I'm in your shoes, credit card has gone today, the Peloton's next. That gets rid of all of your consumer debt, correct? Correct. And now we have every payment back in our life. What's the payment on the Peloton? Um, $81 a month. Okay. So that's 81 bucks a month you have now to throw extra at the mortgage with, which is 1000 bucks a year. Right. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. You will and row differently when it's debt free. I'm telling you. You think so? You will row like no one else. Yeah. A little faster. <laughs> a little faster. A little have more you, pep in the step. Have you seen Boys in the Boat, Denise? The movie? I have not. You I should. Want to see. I want to read the Yes. Yeah, well, read the book, but yes, you should see the movie too. I just thought of it because you love rowing. It's fantastic. Yeah. And my next question too is my deferred comp. Um, I have I work for the state, so I have a pension, which is seventy five percent of my paycheck after thirty years. But I also um, have a deferred comp, and there's seventy four thousand dollars in there right now, and I add eight hundred dollars per month. Should I up that to more? I mean, if we we could definitely afford it, just cutting back just a little bit. Well, I just focus on the percentage. And right now, once you're debt free and you have an emergency fund, then I would begin investing 15% of your income into retirement plans. And do you have a 401k as well? Well, no, it's just a deferred comp. I'm just not deferred sure comp. 
Yeah, okay. I don't know the difference. Well, whatever your retire your employer retirement plan, I would focus on getting fifteen percent in there. Whatever your income is, that's what you should be investing, and so that will help you dictate uh, what your wealth building plan is. And once yeah. the house is paid off, you can increase investing even more. Yeah, there you so go. Thanks for the question. Yeah, thank you, Denise. All right, let's go to Brooke in Dallas, Texas. Brooke, how can we help? Hi. So I recently got engaged, and I have absolutely no clue how much money I can put towards the wedding comfortably. Wow, that's wow. exciting. Congratulations. Congrats. When's the big day? Thank you. We're thinking spring of next year, but no official date or venue or clue, really. Okay. And tell George, we only got about three minutes. I need to get him. He needs some information. When you say that you don't have any idea how much you can spend on the wedding, what does that mean? So I know how much I can contribute, but my fiance, he doesn't quite know with his finances. So I... Um, make about 70k a year and I have about 40 grand to my name that I've saved and that I have from an inherited IRA and so I know what to contribute but he makes about the same but he has a lot of debt whereas I have none so we don't know what comfortably we can put towards that and then still try and save for a house. Have you talked to family yet both sides of the parents and going hey are you guys able and willing and wanting to contribute to this wedding? So his family, they are covering um, rehearsal dinner, okay. but my, um, I only have my dad. My mom passed away, oh. but my dad, he said that he could contribute maybe two grand, and so it's mainly funded by me and my fiance. Okay. So what I would do is take in consideration what all the parents are doing, how much you have and will have, and then how much he's going to be able to do, even if it's not much, then create a budget based on that. And so the budget is now based on reality and not aspirations. Yeah. And instead of going, well, we need a $100,000 wedding, and we're going to go into debt for the rest, we go, nope, we have $35,000 total, and I'm looking at my spreadsheet for my own wedding. And it is nerdy, and I've listed all the expenses, what's estimated, the actual total, who bought Let it. Let me see that thing. The due date is so nerdy. How, how much did you – I got it. And so it involves, you know, hey, my in-laws chipped in, my parents chipped in, an aunt chipped in, and so that will help you uh, start to plan this out. And so let's round number. Let's say you have fifty thousand dollars. Does that sound about right? About. I would go spend fifty thousand and no more, and take into account taxes, deposits, the miscellaneous stuff that the ankle biters. There's going to be a lot of random stuff. I don't like how you just threw go spend fifty thousand. I think that's crazy money. Ken, you're you don't know. You're old. No, you're oh, okay. antiquated. All right, here we go. A all venue right. alone is First fifteen all, grand these right, days. Now listen, no, I get that. Le- this, you set me up. This is going to be great. Boy, right. this is going to get the comments coming I'm not at me. saying she has to spend 50. All right, listen to me, Brooke. Do you have a reasonable Brooke. amount in your mind, Brooke? I was I, about ready to I, go on a rant. Brooke, what's your reasonable that's, amount? I think 20 grand is more yes. than enough. To yes. Yes. I applaud Brooke. Brooke, can I speak to you and all the Brooks out there? I've been married Brooks almost. Brooks only. I've been married almost 26 years. And I will tell you that the only thing I would spend really legit money on is a photographer and i think if you're creative you can because a photographer is the most important part of the wedding because 26 years later my wife and i will look at the photos and i'm glad for every nickel i spent on the photographer because that's what it's about the cake i don't remember the cake nobody cares about the freaking cake you shove it in her face anyway what are we doing here? <laughs> wow. It's all a bunch of pop it's and all a pony show. Don't act like you know what I'm talking about. When she goes to eat it, you do that. It's all fun. It's a, here's the point. Just make beautiful location. Find a way. Get good pictures of it. Don't feed the party. They can feed themselves. Wow. Photographer and a pastor in a good setting. This is The Ramsey Show. <laughs> 